So for the final season of At Granger, we decided to do a recap of where we've been and where we are now before the final season comes out. Once upon a time, there was a group of guys who lived in a building called At Granger. But it actually wasn't called At Granger. It's just called Granger. That's the building. The stories that take place take place at Granger. You see the difference there? There's a little bit of a difference. All right. Let's see. There's me. I'm, I'm in it. Uh, there's my roommate, Stefan. Uh, but he doesn't really talk a lot. I'm not really sure why. Uh, let's see. There's, there's Brian. Brian's kind of the, the mentor of the group. Always, always giving advice. Really look up to him. Uh, then there, let's see, there's Jackson, who's kind of the clueless one of the group. Uh, and then there's Caleb, who loves basketball way too much. And also turns out he doesn't live in Granger. He's actually a village student. But we don't find that out till later. Uh, throughout the first season, uh, we had tons of different adventures. Uh, some reoccurring adventures was when I announced that I decided to make my own movie called Misguided Orphan Guy or Mog. Uh, they got it confused with Emoji or Men of Granger, but it's just Misguided Orphan Guy. Hayden's film, Misguided Orphan Guy or Mog. It's a film about a misguided orphan guy, which... Now that I think about it, it could have been a girl also, because that still works with the G and Mog. Hmm. We may never know. All the times that Brian uh, mentored and gave advice to Caleb and Jackson, and that advice was about girls. It started off all right, I guess, but over time it just got worse and worse, until eventually Brian just got fed up and just decided to stop helping them. Things changed a bit. Because a kid named Trevor appeared. He came out of nowhere. He came on a mystical wind, it seemed. It was a breezy day, after all. But in fact, he came from a dark place. Some place that we try not to speak about. Newton Hall. All of this culminated in the end. Tensions were high. You could slice them with a knife. A blunt knife. A butter knife. A stick. A piece of rubber hose. You could cut it with it. During that time, Jackson began to suspect that Caleb had a secret, not knowing what Caleb's secret was, and that began to divide them and eventually started dividing the group until it all came to a climax in the finale where they were fighting so much that I decided to play a game of Mafia with all of us, because who doesn't like Mafia? Ha! Huh, why not? Mafia is the best way to fix things in relationships, am I right? No, I'm wrong, and he was wrong too, so I decided I'm going to rig this game. After all, it's my job to fix things. And so we played Mafia. In the end, it didn't help. It was, it was a flop. It, it burned really badly, actually. It's, it, it was bad. It was really bad. It was so bad, in fact, that uh, at the end of the season, everybody just kind of went their separate ways. They just disappeared. Most specifically, though, Trevor disappeared. I have a feeling he went back to where he came from, because he transferred back to Walla Walla. And I say back because I think he was using guerrilla recruitment tactics for that college in our space, in our domain. It was a small victory for him, though. He took Caleb with him, and Jackson, Jackson was so scared he fled the country. It was a dark time, a dark time indeed. So dark that we took a summer hiatus. Because <laughs> there's no school during the summer. You see what I did there? It makes sense if you think about it. Yep. We left off with everybody disappearing. Trevor going with Caleb to Walla Walla and Jackson fleeing the country with only a few things. I personally blame myself for everyone leaving. I felt like it was my fault for doing the whole Mafia game in the first place. So it was up to Stefan and Brian to really cheer me up. Uh, and that adventure led them to meeting my brother Anderson, who had just started that year, and Chad, who just really likes tea. A few months later, 
Brian came back to us. The prodigal son returned. Uh, Brian came back to us asking for advice. Turns out he's not the love guru that we all thought he was, and he really didn't know what to do for his date. We realized we needed to help him, but we also realized we had no idea how to. And so he left with only his wits. But Chad, he asked me to spy on Brian so as to help him. I thought that was a great idea. So that's what I did. I gathered my things, I had food, I had a ball, and I had a plushie toy. I jumped in the back of Brian's truck as he left to see where he was going on the date. And I ended up back at the school. Turns out he was just getting something for the date. Date was on campus, which was fine. And so I sneakily went to the location of the date. I hid behind a park bench in a gazebo with a fountain behind me. I had water, I had food, I had everything I needed to spy on him. I observed him and took notes on what not to do because Brian really didn't know what to do. So we tried to help him and I think we made it worse. I'm not sure. All I know is it ended up failing because at the end of the date, he just started dancing and that the girl just ran away. He danced his little heart out, bless his soul. But after that, it came to the end of the year. Brian was graduating. So uh, to see him off, I, I went down and you know, said goodbye and everything, and Stefan was there too. Wave him off into the sunset, a true hero's goodbye. Um, I'll never forget it though. Um, after Brian left, Stefan talked. And I guess you'll just have to watch season three to find out where that goes after that. So, stay tuned. <laughs>